Welcome back. You're still watching the AM show and just gone by the sports team. Brought to you an interview with Joshua Clotte. And now we're moving on to the discussion of the day, taxes. Well, let me tell you a story first. Over the holidays, I went out to eat with my friends and family. We enjoyed our meal over laughter and smiles. But when the bill came, hmm, the smiles faded. We had to pay over 400 CDs in taxes. We vowed to cook next time. And we also have to you know, support our restaurants. I thought I was alone until I heard many people complain. So we will have this conversation. Do you feel priced out of restaurants? We'll delve more into this, but let's talk to our data analyst, Kofi AJ, or Isaac Kofi AJ, and he's been researching into these new taxes. Isaac, you have been researching these new taxes for this year. What can you tell us? Well, my man, Happy New Year, and I hope you are doing Happy well. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year. Nice to hear from you again. Well, probably it's not a good year um, to start a year on a note of more taxes, uh, but it's still a Happy New Year anyway. We have more than 360 days to go. Uh, but January is more or less like a month where a lot of taxes are actually on the tarmac, uh, ready to take off. Um, first, let's talk about even the taxes on the games of chance, the betting industry. Remember the first phase uh, actually came, uh, was rolled over and uh, was actually implemented in 2023, uh, somewhere in the, the mid part of 2023. And the full uh, um, you know, taxes on games of chance and lottery will actually take place or will be fully rolled out in 2024, January. And you, you, you've been hearing this already, Parliament has already given uh, the nod for, for the Finance Ministry and GRA to actually uh, bring in place uh, five more, uh, five uh, tax, um, you know, um, laws that have been passed or bills that have been passed. And in all of this, government is hoping to raise some significant amount of um, you know, see this um, to be able to show up its budget. Now, Mamisi, let's start from the genesis of all of this uh, problem, um, where you know Ghana, what our problem is that uh, day in and day out, so annually we spend more than we are able to generate. So for this year, for instance, we had, uh, you know, the budget deficit also going up again, but increasing at a decreasing rate. And governments would have to find ways and means to make sure that they fund this. And so we'll be uh, looking for money uh, to fund that budget deficit, which is almost around $6 billion in 2024. How is government going to do this? We are under an IMF program, and we told the IMF we are going to do a raft of things. We've told the IMF that um, if we are able to review the VAT, where the VAT has now been increased to 12% to 15%, you were recalling, you know, going to the, the restaurant, eating, and then when the bill comes, the, the amount of taxes on it and the amount of taxes you have to pay. It's all because the VAT has been increased from that 12% to 15%. And in some cases, my so you see the wrong application of this VAT where the VAT uh, is now applied on taxes that have already been charged. And so you end up paying more than you are supposed to pay. But in 2024, there are additional taxes that governments want to tax, um, you know, handle that governments would want to roll um, to bring in place. We have the emission tax uh, where drivers are expected to pay an amount of, uh, I think, 100 CDs annually uh, as, as that ta tax you know, amount is going to be a lump sum, so 100 CDs annually. Drivers are already complaining because if you look into the budget, we already have what we call the pollution and sanitation levy, which uh, people are, Ghanaians are already paying. And so pollution versus emission, I don't know what's the difference, but I mean, we already have in place an emission, um, you know, pollution and sanitation levy already in place and drivers are being asked to pay, uh, you know, 100 CDs uh, annually. They've already, you know, oppose this tax indolence. They are saying that if government goes ahead to, to implement uh, this tax handle, what they are going to do is that they are going to increase transport fares by up to some 60% yes. in 2020. Yes. 
and, and, and you know that all of the, the agents where governments, the, the economic agent that government is actually targeting these tax handles uh, to, are all saying that if government tries, they are going to push the burden onto the final consumer, which is the ordinary Ghanaian. Well, Kofi, so if I should come mm -hmm. in here, if you could quickly um, list out the new, the new taxes that we're supposed to be paying. So, so most of them are not necessarily new taxes. So some of them are actually, you know, expansion. So first of all, we have the VAT expansion. So the VAT in terms of the rates has been increased from 12 to 15. Also, um, you know, government is also saying they're going to give some sort of exemption to VAT exemptions to uh, people or industries that are actually producing uh, locally manufactured sanitary towels. That's um, their Um, it looks like there's some interruption in our connection with Kofi J. Um, he's telling us the new taxes that we're supposed to be paying, how this is um, being done by government, also the situation we find ourselves in currently. Um, we are under an IMF program. We have government has more to pay, debts to pay, and so we have to bear the brunt. Well, Kofi joins us again. Kofi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, my music. Right, let's go on. Right, so I was talking about the VAT. That's one thing that has been expanded. Um, the rate has been expanded from 12 to 15, and also some sort of exemptions have been given. Also, there's going to be uh, some sort of uh, vehicle income tax. Uh, so those of us who enjoy our ride hailing, you know, um, um, you know, our rides, the boats and the Uber and the Yangos, they are now being asked to pay um, some sort of, you know, vehicle income tax, just like the way the taxi drivers and the church hall drivers, uh, you know, have been paying. And so they are also saying that if they were not really consulted in terms of they being asked to pay this tax. And definitely, if you listen to them, you get a sense that if this tax is actually implemented in January, what they are going to do is that you have some of the burden being shifted onto the final co consumer who are people who patronize this, um, you know, uh, um, um, you know, vehicles and online, you know, uh, taxis and um, a vehicle that takes us around the ride hailing apps. And so usually, formerly they were not paying um, the uh, vehicle income tax, but now they are being asked to pay. They've right. been making a the point. They are already paying the value added tax already. And so they've been asked to pay the vehicle income tax without any proper consultation mm -hmm. is sort of, you know, act of out of place. And if you listen to them, just like I said, they are also hoping to pass on a significant portion of this tax onto the final consumer. So right. I've spoken about who already, and I was also talking about the emission, you know, uh, you know, tax that structure or commission. Right. Well, that was Kofi. Isaac Kofiji, our data and research analyst, giving us a rundown of the taxes we are going to pay. But we lost him there. But let's move on. Samuel Akosia Ejampoma Ombe, Edem Azuma, and Kweko Furiata join me to talk about their experiences in restaurants. And do you feel priced out of eating in restaurants? Thank you for joining me on, a on the AM show. If you can hear me, unmute. And I was asking if, if you feel priced out of, of, of restaurants. Samuela Akosia Ejampoma Obey, um, we can hear from you. I think lately it's become a little worse than it used to be before. Because um, especially during the Christmas and the New Year, most people would like to go out, have fun with friends and family. And because maybe throughout the year you are used to eating a particular way, you decide to do something fun, kind of like an exploration for you and your friends. And you go, and I think there was this particular experience for me and my friends that was very serious. We had fun, we had our meals and everything with a certain budget in mind. And now we're done and the taxes were added. And so it's like everybody kind of checked the price of what they ordered. And then we're done. And then, um, like, the taxes come. 
and it's almost like double or about triple like the amount we had budgeted for. And at that point, everybody just starts to look at everybody's face and they're like, what are we going to do? Because this was not in our budget. And it's just because like taxes have been added and there's nothing you can do about it, but we just had to cough the money and pay. And so the outing that was supposed to be fun in quotes became some kind of way. And it was a memory, but it was also a lesson for us because yeah, now when we go out, we have to check and then include that in our budget before we kind of decide on where to go. Well, um, Samola, are you able to tell us how much you budgeted for and how much you were supposed to pay at the end of the day? Okay, so we were a group of about 10. And I think we wanted to spend, I think, roughly almost like 2K or okay. something like that. So we are a group of about 10. So it was just like drinks and stuff. Yeah. And then we had to pay like, we coughed about like, an additional 1K, I think, to cater for the taxes and everything. You don't say. Yeah, and because it was a group, like we could pull the resources, but just imagine you're like two people and you're going out and you're just surprised by the whole thing. It was very bad for us like that day, yeah. Right, Adam, Adam, Azuma, I mean, do you share in some other sentiments? Oh, I really do. It's... Uh especially before you go out and you choose the venue, you, you actually take a look at their menu. Mm. And when you take a look at the menu, you don't plan that. It doesn't come to mind. It doesn't really cross your mind that there will be taxes. So you look at the menu and you make your choices in mind already, just you know, planning before you go out. Then you get there, you enjoy the meal with friends or family. Then after the meal, the bill comes. In your mind, okay, I'm spending 2,000 CDs here. And then over 18% in taxes arrive plus service charge on an already expensive meal because the restaurants are also, you know, increasing their prices due to demand and other forms of taxes they're also yeah. facing. Yeah. And if you're in, in a group, it, it causes this, um, it brings this elephant in the room, mm -hmm. you know, now there's some cost sharing negotiations. People are looking at each other like, why did you order so much? Because now I have to pay 18% on something you ordered. And um, it, it messes up with group, group dynamics post fun. Yes. Right. And, and it messes up with people's budgets because people are budgeted some amount to spend and some amount for transport to get home or to buy fuel. And then the taxes mess up the whole budget for them because you know, they pre-planned before coming to the event or the gathering. Well, Kweku, did you also have to cough up more than what you budgeted for during the festivities at the restaurant? Yeah, I actually had to. Um, there were so many times when, I think I realized that in the early part of the year, because there was a, there was a part of the year where um, there was this uproar on Twitter, where someone ordered something and then the taxes were about above 200 CDs. And it's when that came that there's a tax um, account, Twitter mm -hmm. accounts that came to break it down that this is what you paid and this is why you paid what you paid. And we started realizing that ah, these people are actually taking a lot of money from us. So during the festivities, I went with that mindset with my friends, but we still even had to cough up. We still had to cough up. We, we, we went with the mindset that the task might be two, might be two times what we're about to buy, right. but we still had to cough up the money. So it's, I feel like it's become a new norm in Ghana, which is which is really, really strange and really uncomfortable. So people prefer to do more picnics and be in their own corner than go to a restaurant because you know you're about to pay triple or double what you planned. And it's, it's uncomfortable. Right. So uh, this leads me to my next question. To all three of you, but we can still start from, from our lady. Um, does this how does this affect um, patronizing the restaurant? Um, I think for me, as nice as the restaurant is, I mean, unless I'm not paying. If I'm not paying, I don't mind. But if I'm paying... <laughs> that, that is putting more burden on the guys, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I wouldn't choose a restaurant that would like cause you so much problem. But if I have a say in it, I would choose a place that is a little reasonable so that, that we factor in. We check the menu, like Adam said. So we check and then we see, okay... We are going to spend about this much. And obviously, you are transporting yourself to the place. So 
I'm not so enthused by like very popular or nice restaurants anymore mm-hmm. because Charlie, after the chilling, you come back and then your day-to-day life is still going on. So I would pick a place that is like friendly to the budget I have. And then I'll just go and have my fun in that small way. And it works for me. Now, apart from the restaurant, will there be other alternatives for you? Maybe cooking at home like I will do from now. So my family and I, we, we went to the beach yesterday and we cooked because it's so expensive. And even after we got there, we were still asked to pay for, what, chairs? Or we were asked to pay like 100 CDs deposits for a person, per person. That is, even if you have food, just so that they can, you know, make some of the money or like you have to buy a chair or something. But at the end of the day, the amount you would spend even purchasing that chair, when you do the math, you realize that it is less expensive than if you paid for the food, the drinks, the taxes for everybody that you're going out with. And so cooking is normal. I mean, I would cook any day, any time. But then on those special occasions where you want to go to a restaurant, I think that lately it's not, it's not easy like that. Right. So, Adam, um, you heard Samuela say that. She may yes. not necessarily pay for the thing. So now, I mean, these days we have to find <clears throat> alternatives. What will be your alternative this time around? Um, so apart from food, I think that now more outings should be um, activity-driven outings, like maybe some games or um, some picnics and something that makes you feel like you've gotten value for money. Because if you end up going to a restaurant that is not... Um, up to standard and you even go and pay for food that is not nice it, it, like it feels like you've lost unfortunately adam's adam's connection has been truncated i mean um ca- adam can you hear me hello yes i can hear you can yes. you hear me yes yes i can hear you now let's continue yes. then. so um, now we have to find alternatives that are cheaper and maybe activity driven more than just going to sit at a restaurant to eat so that you feel like you have your value for money. And also you need to know who you are going out with. You know, they, they, they have to be a way that um, a discussion can be had about places that you want to go and alternatives. And um, it means that now you can't be spontaneous. You can't see a nice restaurant and just walk in. You have to do more research on the restaurant that you're doing your thesis. And yes, so finding alternatives to have fun with your friends and family will be the best option. Well, well, Kweku, um, are you going to budget extra for the girls that you will take out? Because now we're also finding alternatives and or you decide that we should cook at home and, and eat. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Uh, but I think that with our current generation, things are kind of evolving, should I say. You meet some people that would rather want to do an activity, would rather want to go. And there, there are actually a lot of activities around Accra right now. I think entrepreneurs have realized that, okay, people or the younger generation are moving to that side more. So you see a lot of places that are doing activities. You can even go to a restaurant and they have some activity somewhere. So for me, I guess I will budget, but I, I want to piggyback on what Adam said. It depends on the person you are going with. I definitely would want to go with someone that I can be friends with. And we can even talk aside the fact that we have to go to an expensive restaurant and it's all about the, the glamour and all. I actually want to speak to you. I want to have fun with you. So definitely going to budget more because of Accra. Accra, Accra, is, Accra is, is tough, but definitely also going to understand that the person you are going with is someone you can have fun with. So you can go have an activity somewhere, have a picnic somewhere and enjoy each other's company. So yeah. Interesting discussions from three of you. We are so grateful to have you on the show and thank you for your thoughts. Thanks. And you heard from Samuela Akusia, Ejapoma Obeng Kweku Furiata and Adam Azuma. We are grateful for your time. But then the question still remains, do you feel priced out of eating in restaurants? We have in the studio Wisdom Fanu and he's the Associate Director Tax and Regulatory Services at Deloitte. Wisdom, you're welcome to the right, show. Thank you. Good morning and Happy New Year to you. <laughs> happy New Year to you too. 
And you had that conversation with yeah, just Yeah, very had. interesting one. What, what would be your initial, you know, views on, on what they just said? Well, um, yeah, very interesting. And, and those are the street facts. Um, mm -hmm. the, what they are saying is what's happening on the ground. Um, so I was out with the family myself yesterday. And, um, yeah, the, the taxis, so for, from where I sit, mm. um, so I see the bigger picture. And, and that's not to... Uh, say that the individuals are not feeling this because I am. Uh, you also part of felt. House. It. Uh, exactly. How much did you pay in taxes? Do you um, remember? Uh, or how many did you take out? How much were you paying? So I, I used to be very conscious with these numbers, um, but then my wife tells me uh, your tax, <laughs> being a tax man, is coming out a bit too much. But I paid around uh, 250 in but taxes. But taxes alone yeah. for the food. The food. You could have, that could have prepared like a meal for a family of four, you know, yeah. right? Yeah, but you cannot discount the experience. <laughs> anyway. Well. Yeah, so interesting comment. So my initial um, thoughts on that, I, I think um, our friends have mentioned them. Uh, so it's a time that we would have to plan, keep to budget. Um, when going out, you know, uh, you would have to check out with the, uh, with the restaurants, with, with their prices, and to confirm that their prices are tax inclusive because those are it's very important for you to plan with mm -hmm. that you look out for promos as well yeah. uh, where there are promos uh, family packages you look out for them because you are trying to be efficient with your spending wow. uh, maybe you look at areas uh, not within Accra um, outside Accra that could be uh, cheaper and someone said uh, if West Singleton was um, a good on the budget uh, event <laughs> this, this holiday. I know, right? Yeah. But are we being overtaxed? When we compare our tax to GDP ratio to um, other countries in the sub region? Mm. Um, the question of whether we are being overtaxed, um, it, it's, it's one that um, always comes up. Um, so I, I, I would always go uh, with what the empirical evidence is. Um, our tax to GDP is not in a great place. Uh, so we are always we are hovering around 13.5 percent, 14 percent, which is below the average of of uh, the sub region. Uh, we have uh, countries doing 17, 16 percent. So, in terms of tax to GDP, we are we are on the low. But um, it's it's not always a function of the rates uh, on taxes. So um, your colleague, the analyst, was talking about. VAT at 15 yes. percent, and yes. the reality for, for us in Ghana is that it's 15 percent plus levies um, at six percent, uh, so it takes us to uh, almost 22 percent. If you are eating in a restaurant, that comes with a one percent tourism levy, so it's quite high. So our rates are high, um, but then the tax to GDP. Our rates are high. Our rates are, are generally to other high. Countries yes, in the sub I, I work uh, across the sub region, right. and. Uh, anyone who interacts with us, our VAT um, is, is on the high side, but it, it, it's also a reflection of our circumstances. Where we are as a country, um, we've also seen the, the brand that we bear where we do not collect enough. So I was going to make the point that the low tax to GDP um, is not necessarily a function of the rate, but... Um, it's, it's a reflection of how much we are able to collect. collect and that's yeah. how much you and I pay when we pay for uh, food at the restaurant. But of course, how much companies pay uh, on their corporate income tax, how much we pay on our salaries and whatnot. And um, it's about the efficiency in how we are able to collect enough across a broad spectrum, which is uh, an area I would say we would have to continue to improve, spreading uh, the net so that uh, we pay more across um, an, a lot of economic uh, entities so that the brand right. on individuals um, is, is um, more manageable. What I find difficult to really comprehend mm. is that we always say that the informal sector must be taxed more. Right. We've always said this over and over again, leading the very few who are in the formal sector fatigued with taxes. Right. What really can we do to widen this, you know, tax net to the form, informal sector? Yeah. Why is government not doing much about that bit? Okay. Um, yeah, so w what can we do? Um, yeah, so my, my so first short answer would be uh, we would have to, as a, a people, uh, build 
uh, a culture to accept taxes that we would live with taxes because no nation <coughs> sorry no nation is able to to develop without taxes um the government i know is doing is doing a lot uh, but then of course there is much more to do uh, where there is voluntary compliance um, no mechanism that imposes a, a, a compliance system can be as effective as a general culture where we can we pay more and when we talk about the the informal sector uh, those things are not very far away so we we've talked and, and your analyst uh, made reference to the ride hailing uh, yeah. business where we are asking the government is asking um, those uh, people in in that space to pay vehicle income tax so this is not a new tax but that is a sector that can be described as informal in a way because you have people driving around they earn their income they are already supposed to file income taxes at the end of the year declare how much they have made from the uh, ride hailing uh, driving around and pay tax so the vehicle income tax is a mechanism to ask them to pay some tax up front um, so that at the end of the year that becomes a credit for them so um, I will call on general acceptance for moves such as uh, what we are talking about, the vehicle in income tax for ride hailing business. Once there is that acceptance and um, people involved in that business are paying that vehicle income tax and actually filing, or we have a good number, filing their taxes at the end of the day, we are increasing what we rake in from that informal sector. And that helps us uh, to move forward. But that also should always come with the, uh, the caution that um, you, 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 make, you make more revenue by building efficiencies on existing taxes and not necessarily adding on or increasing taxes. So that balance would be something that the government, the Ghana Revenue Authority would have to find, but also with the support of um, everyone from my side as a consultant, your side, as media and the general public, uh, public supporting tax moves that help to bring in more taxes efficiently. Well, Mr. Kwanu, um, one thing too is um, the many Ghanaians who are paying taxes, yes. the 1% who may be paying the taxes but don't feel it as much as those uh, who aren't earning much, mm. do you feel that the tax structure of the country which is often consumer-based, is fair to our society? Well, uh, thank you. Whether the, the tax structure is fair, again, uh, should be something that our academics, um, researchers put uh, to, uh, to, to research and, and for us to contribute towards that. Uh, but overall, Every tax structure would, would have the direct taxes, which is the uh, tax on personal income and tax on companies' income. Um, if you look at our personal income tax structure, it's already progressive. Um, those in the uh, bracket that's above 50,000 cities, uh, chargeable income a month, pay tax at 35%. And we have a bracket up to uh, 402 Ghana cities paying zero tax, then it goes up to 5%, 10%, 17%. So it's progressive from, from that uh, end. So there is uh, a balance between the progressive and then the what we call regressive tax, the indirect taxes. Um, overall, indirect tax has its, its place in every economy. So um, we cannot do without the VATs. We cannot do without the levies. Maybe the levy, how it is, I would say we would have to work on how it's structured, especially for businesses to be able to deduct levies. But uh, we cannot do without them. We would have to streamline the rates for sure. Uh, but then we cannot do without paying some tax on uh, purchasing goods and services. And um, that would come with government um, continually reviewing the efficiency of the taxes that we introduce, having some certainty in the system and also the, the, the public supporting uh, from that side. But overall, I know uh, we are 
quite overwhelmed with taxes. Exactly, my we are. Where are we coming to? Because you see, mm. Mr. Kwandu, if you listen to um, these individuals we spoke to a while ago, I mean, if you're getting so so little money yeah. and you it's the festive season you yeah. want to go out and exactly. and have a little fun you're paid more than you budgeted for how else do you think we can continue with this style of taxing mm. you know how <laughs> how are we going to survive yeah um so for instance vat was in, increased to 15 percent the standard rate vat was increased to 15 percent last year mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and when you put it together with the levies, and we are talking about 22%, which is high, and I admit that that is high. How do we continue? I would propose that in the medium term, government looks to reduce the VAT rate. Reduce the VAT rate, we, we were at 12.5%, we went to 15% because of the current circumstances, but that should not be our norm. It should, they, it should be that we are looking to reduce the rates so that the pinch on the individual is, is reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, for sure, I would, I would say that we would, we would have to look at reducing um, VAT to make us competitive as a country and to, to uh, manage the impact of, on individuals. But I can understand that that would have to be something that we plan it into, in, into the medium term, maybe in, in the next a year or two, um, we look at reducing the rate so that there, there is that um, relief uh, for consumers. Right. So let's come to the new taxes that um, have been introduced, including the right. um, pollution and sanitation levy, the emission levy. What does this mean to us? How does it, um, how do we, you know, um, how does it, will, will it, how does it affect really? us in, in that way. First of all, explain to us how, what it means. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, it. yeah, it's uh, important to start from what it means. Yes. Uh, so, we are looking at a situation where um, government has proposed and uh, bills have been passed. Um, one, the VAT amendment uh, bill that has been passed into law. What it's looking to do is to revise uh, the exemption schedule and, and by that. So, we have a number of items we pay, we, we buy, that we do not, we do not pay VAT on. Mm -hmm. So the water we drink, um, education, um, food in its natural state, we do not pay VAT because those items are uh, identified as um, basic and, and um, we are taking away taxes so that um, the, the impact on households are managed. Government is looking to revise that list. Uh, to add some few more items to the items that are subject to tax. And uh, this includes um, adding, uh, bringing excise books that are imported uh, to, uh, under the taxable supply regime so that there will be VAT on that. Uh, we are going to uh, pay <coughs> VAT on domestic air travel, um, which uh, previously um, has been exempted from VAT. So... Uh, we are, once that is in full force, we are going to pay some 22% VAT and levies on domestic air travel. Uh, Short-term insurance, so your car insurance uh, would be attracting VAT going forward. Postage, that has been uh, exempted for a while, uh, there will be VAT on that. So that um, uh, is the summary of the changes coming out of VAT. And what this would mean would be that the consumer of these goods and services would have to pay more to get them. Right. So all things being equal, if you were paying 100 CDs uh, to, to, say, get an air ticket, which I know is way more than 100 CDs, you are going to pay some uh, 22 CDs more on uh, getting a, a, an air ticket. So consumers can expect to pay more because um, typically, the suppliers, the businesses running um, or making these supplies would pass this on to consumers. So that is what we can expect. And then there are some changes from SI tax and all that. So, but we can expect that for specific purchases, what will typically come to us would be uh, motor insurance, we would pay more, air travel, we will pay more. Um, and, and there is also 
an increase on the excise rate on cedar beer that uh, we would have to pay more uh, to get that and, and some other increases, stamp, stamp duty mostly for businesses. So generally, we can expect to pay more for certain uh, purchases that we make. Now, uh, paying more would mean that uh, we would have to take all things being equal, if you have a set disposable income, you would have to take a bigger percentage of your disposable income to, for instance, pay for motor insurance, yeah. which um, uh, you, you wouldn't have paid uh, last year. So you will pay some 22% more if the insurance company is not increasing their own prices. You will pay some 22% more on your motor insurance. Mm -hmm. And then there is the emission tax Taxes. on all internal combustion uh, vehicles. Basically, what that means is that if you have a vehicle that uh, runs on, on uh, any fossil fuel, your petrol or diesel, you would pay 100 CDs every year for emissions, as emissions tax. So that would mean that you would have to pay more, and I can suspect that would be uh, taken when we go to do our roadworthy uh, renewal. So we would have to plan that into our budget for 2024, as households um, and prioritize. Motor insurance, for instance, you cannot go without. Um, the emission tax, you cannot go without if you are driving. And you would have to budget that into your, your planning for uh, 2024. When next you are renewing your insurance, you would have to pay that. You, you keep going to VAT, 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 VAT. And, and there seems to be some kind of... Um, misunderstanding mm. over its implementation. Can yeah. you please educate us more on that? Right, so um, VAT generally, so the full name is value added tax. Yes. Um, and it's supposed to be collected by suppliers of taxable supplies. And um, it's a, there is a list of supplies that are not taxable. So you have a number of things that you do not pay VAT on. I mentioned uh, if you are buying water, sachet water, so Water that is not bottled, you do not pay VAT on. If you are uh, paying for your tomatoes, your onions from the market, you do not uh, pay VAT on. But if you are, you are buying thin tomatoes, mm -hmm. that is, is taxable. If you are buying bottled water, that is taxable for VAT purposes. And there is a percentage. Um, so the general rate is uh, 15%, which is the standard rate. And uh, the businesses... Uh, selling these um, goods are supposed to charge that 15%. But that is on top of uh, levies of 6% made up of the National Health Insurance Levy, the um, Get Fund Levy, and then the COVID-19 Levy. Uh, so together, 6% uh, charged on. So if you have 100 cities, uh, the levies of 6% charged on the 100 cities, you get 106 and then the VAT of 15% is then charged on the 106 to get the final amount you pay as a consumer. Right. What would be your general advice to Ghanaians who are still fatigued with these taxes? How do we, you know, whistle our way out or, you know, um, maintain it? Right. Yeah, so to Ghanaians, and talking about 2024, that is in the short term, uh, we are expecting uh, these new... Um, taxes to, to take effect, so not new because yeah. uh, new uh, tax handles have been introduced, but um, some items that we use not to pay VAT on would now attract VAT. Uh, excise taxes uh, would go up, so for certain things that we purchase, we can expect to pay more. Uh, for Ghanaians, for 2024, uh, the conversation we had uh, with our friends uh, indicate that you, you cannot run, uh, you, you cannot run a household uh, on autopilot. You would have to uh, understand what uh, prices mean, and those prices definitely have taxes in. So you would have to budget your spend, prioritize what uh, you need to spend on, and identify what is the most critical um, goods and services you would need to spend on as a household, what it means for your health, for your education, for the general well-being of your household, before the other aspects on, on luxury. And that we cannot go away without. We would need our hospitality industry, where we focused on 
to remain vibrant, right. um, we would need to continue encouraging tourists who, uh, from an economic point of view, are known to have um, money to spend. And we want them to spend those monies in our economy so that um, Ghanaians will get jobs in the same uh, restaurants and hotels uh, to also have a living and, and be able to provide for their families. So overall, to Ghanaians, we would have to look at 2024 with um, a keen eye in terms of planning and budgeting mm. our spend. Uh, for businesses, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, um, it's, it's, it's a year where the Ghana Revenue Authority is increasing its uh, compliance drive. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses, number one uh, step in terms of tax planning is to remain compliant. Um, there are businesses that uh, can get deduction for VATs they pay on, on uh, their inputs, but they do not do that because they do not get the uh, benefits of, of claiming input because they do not file. So businesses would have to keep a close eye on compliance this year. You do not want to pay penalty or interest beyond what you have planned to pay for this year. So a keen eye on compliance risk management from a tax point of view, so that you only pay what you have to pay uh, and not more. Well, yeah. you, you advise business, but what would also be your advice for government who keeps piling up the taxes on us? Well, um, I've said this here, um, and I'll continue to, to drive home the point. Uh, businesses stay or live in countries for a number of reasons, from a broad strategy point of view mm -hmm. to um, the economic circumstances, because they are not uh, charity organizations. They are here to make profit. And they are here to make that profit and retain the profit. So government would have to uh, keep a balance between taxation and competitiveness as a country. And to do that, um, there would be a need to continue stakeholder engagements uh, with the business community, with, uh, with consultants, with CSOs, mm. and um, to, to also empirically um, review how these taxes impact businesses. Right. But another important point is that businesses also need certainty. They, they need to understand what their tax bill would be in the country before they, they invest and for the period that they intend to stay. So um, changes in tax laws that affect businesses uh, would have to be within the framework. And thankfully, we now have the medium-term revenue strategy that the government has published. And we are hoping to get some more details around what changes we can expect between 2024 and 2027 so that businesses can plan to stay within uh, those taxes and also uh, be in, an, uh, in a competitive environment where the uh, government keeps the tax rates at competitive rates right. and then the administrators of the taxes also uh, keep the administration uh, uh, fair mm. and, and uphold good faith uh, throughout. I'm grateful for your time here, Mr. Wisdom Fanu, who is Associate Director, Tax and Regulatory Services at Deloitte Ghana. And, you know, you've had all there is to know about the tax system. Be compliant. Anyway, we move on to the world of music. We'll come back and talk about jazz.